meditate on the cow out in the barn because you know it's like way more authentic but um yeah it's really cold <laughs> and super windy today so um i've gone for comfort over authenticity um which you know is cool with me uh because yeah it is there is something blowing in that there um the goats are hiding and the sheep have all like um, hidden um, behind stone walls so you know that the weather is miserable. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to come on and give you all a bit of an update on milking and keeping our cow, Petunia. So uh, we've been milking Petunia now for about three months and it has been a massive learning curve. So now it's chase her around the barn time. Um, She's out she of food. We do need to get a, a, a way of hooking her up. There's so much milk in here. Yeah, I want a bit more, a bit more milk. Um, you know, and I think that we knew that there would be a lot to learn. Um, and we knew that we would have to figure things out as we go along, like we do everything. But I think that we underestimated just how much of a you know how much learning we really had to do and how much tweaking we've had to do over the course of the last three months and i think that that's for a few reasons um i think one is that we were super spoiled we now know despite me complaining endlessly about dasha our main milking goat and what a pain she is uh in retrospect yeah she's she's a really easy goat to milk um she's really compliant and goats are really easy to handle i mean partially because of their size you know, we have learned that, you know, Petunia as a reject from the commercial dairy industry, we kind of thought that would mean that she would be great at home milking, um, but it kind of turns out that actually she's a total pain. Um, not, not terrible, but um, yeah, it doesn't necessarily equal, you know, there are reasons that she was not working in a commercial dairy. Um, some of that is that she is not very compliant. Um, not that she's terrible, but she's not like leader on a ribbon, uh, as we were told <laughs> Jersey cows would be. She doesn't necessarily go where we want her to go or stand how we want her to stand. Whereas Dash just stands perfectly when we milk her and we don't even have to tie her up or anything. So yeah, definitely learning on that front. I think also because here in the UK, keeping a house cow is really not very common. Uh, in fact, we don't know anyone else who keeps a house cow for milk. Uh, we know lots of other people who keep goats for milk. Um, and we have had to learn a lot from both the, in the States where there are a lot of homesteaders who do keep cows. Um, although I have to say that a lot of them tend to be um, either breeds that we don't really get here or um, mini jerseys that have been bred specifically for small dairying situations as opposed to commercially bred jerseys that operate in a big commercial herd like we have. Mm -hmm, um, exactly. But yeah, there's lots of excuses there, but really it came down to us trying to figure out what works best for us. When we started milking Petunia, we had a couple of big challenges to overcome. Um, one was that we were initially milking in our main animal barn, um, just kind of in amongst the animals, which A, wasn't very hygienic, um, and B, there was no sort of space to put Petunia's food and Petunia that meant that she was kind of, cl not closed in, but at least contained while we built up a milking routine. It kind of changed every day, and it depended on who was in the barn, who we could get out of. I mean, unsurprising, it wasn't working. We had been holding off, we have, we have now moved Petunia for milking into what we call the woodshed, which is the main sort of outdoor event space slash barn um, that we recently put doors on. Um, and I don't know why we'd held off putting her in there for milking, I think partially because um, we can't, now serve food in a barn that we're milking in um, for events and things, which we don't really do that that often and we had to prioritize essentially in the end what made the biggest difference to our lives and that really was not just keeping that one barn pristine, it was actually using it um, so that we could milk Petunia. 
Um, and then, so, so we've moved her now into that barn and that is loads better. Um, we have a lot more space. We have some feed set up in the corner. She stands against the wall. It's much cleaner. We can hose it out. There's actually a sink in there. Um, so overall that process of getting her to stand, milking her in a nice, clean milking barn is great. Then the second part of the, the sort of main trickiness was trying to figure out a schedule that worked for us. So there's kind of two things going on with our scheduling or the, some of the things we had to overcome. The first is that I broke my arm at the beginning of last year. Um, you may remember, I may, I may have mentioned it once or 700 times. Um, and so I, on the whole, have been unable to milk. I still can only do about five, 10 minutes at a time. Um, but I'm, I'm building up to it. Um, but that has meant that Kevin has been solely responsible for milking for the last year for the goats and then for the last three months for the cow. And um, that meant that Kevin is not a morning person, I will say it gently. Um, so we, what he wanted to do was separate the cow and the calf during the day and milk them when he got home at night. But there was a massive problem with that. And that is the cow and the calf would holler all day long when they were separated. And it, I mean, A, it wasn't pleasant for them. It wasn't pleasant for us. Um, we could not find a routine with it where they were both comfortable during the day to be separated and we could milk at night. Um, or if we tried to limit it where I would just separate in the afternoon, um, and just have a few hours of them separate so we could milk. I would often forget or I'd get caught up in things and not do it till too late. So that was a bit of a disaster. So now we are separating at night and that works loads better. Petunia knows that there's a routine. The calf knows that there's a routine and there's no hollering. The only time that we ever get yelled at is if Petunia thinks that we've woken up too late, um, which doesn't happen very often. We're up pretty early, we're milking in between the two school runs. So we have a school bus at eight and a school bus at nine for the kids. Um, so in between those two, we're milking and I'm helping Kevin, which I think helps him feel motivated and not, you know, like left out in the miserable weather because January is tough weather-wise. It is cold and windy, as I mentioned, as I sit in here with my cup of coffee. <laughs> so the other main challenge that we have faced with the cow is um, just dealing with the quantity of milk. Now, for better or worse, Petunia is not a particularly milky cow. We're not overflowing with milk, um, but we do have a lot. So we get about a gallon a day and um, we have had to figure out the best way to use that milk so that it's not getting wasted every day. Um, and part of the challenge with that has been the kids are not in love with Petunia's milk. We didn't expect that because they always loved goat's milk um, and have never had a problem drinking goat's milk. Um, Theo in particular does not like Petunia's milk and he asks for store milk, um, which is, I think possibly he's worried about drinking sour milk, which does, you know, has happened sometimes if we haven't um, cooled everything down quickly enough or haven't necessarily monitored the dates. Um, but yeah, figuring that one out has been tricky. So we have, um, I think, finally come up with a way around it is that um, if we skim the milk, so use our cream separator to take a lot of the butter fat out of it, it is more palatable for him um, and the other kids don't mind. every single day to use and to make with a gallon of milk. So we've made lots of different kinds of cheese. I would say that feta is our favorite so far. Um, we have a good recipe going for that. I also really love lebna, which is like a strained yogurt, a strained Greek yogurt. Um, and I eat that most days and that's been fine for my stomach. Um, and mozzarella, I, 
I'm not great at mozzarella, despite teaching cheese courses. Mozzarella is a bit of my downfall. Otherwise, I have to say that having the dairy cow has been a really amazing addition to the farm. Um, Petunia, with the new schedule, has been great for milking. The farm experience is really great. Um, I really love the cheese. I like the routine of milking and making, you know, something with the milk every day. I really enjoy that. And um, yeah, she's just, even though I say that she's such a pain, and she is a terrible pain, I really kind of love her. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, I don't think that I like compliant animals as much as I like the, the naughty ones. Yeah, and I think that that learning, you know, that, that for us, that's really one of the most valuable things about living the kind of life that we do, is that we can then pass those lessons on through our courses. We've got some cheese making courses coming up and um, we have a new home dairy workshop. So looking at how to manage goats and cows for your own consumption. So yeah, I, I feel like, although we still have a lot more to learn, it's really valuable for us to have made the mistakes and then figured out a solution. Um, because I think that that's how we improve and how we make things work, you know, better for us and, and for other people. So yeah, that's me. So, how is milking a cow different from milking the goat? It's fairly similar apart from the size of the beast. Um, and, and the, the behavior. Milk. And the behavior. Um, we were very spoiled with Dasha. Dasha is a very, very good goat and she generally the only thing is the cow has never really kicked the bucket over, mm. but she shuffles a lot, so we have to shuffle along with her. And she can also hold her milk in um, and hold it back from us so that we can't get it. Um, but actually the, the milking process itself is pretty straightforward. Oh. And looks like she's thinking about whether or not she wants to stand here for me. 